This is the ascent uh, liftoff for those of you who weren't fortunate enough to be there. Uh, very fortunate from our standpoint, but I understand from the folks on the ground, it was one of the clearer days we've ever had in Florida. When, when the solids get a hold of you right here, you know you're going where those solids want to go, and you hope that something keeps them pointed in the right direction, because you're on your way. The role, as reported before, was not disconcerting or confusing in any way. You know, that, that's about uh, a 90-degree roll there, as soon as you clear the pad. As Bo said, we were kind of prepared for more shaking and clattering and vibration than we actually had. We're approaching SRB SEP here. You can see tail off. There are the set motors, and uh, as I say, those cause it to fall away in the right direction. So this is a view of the uh, of the tra tracking and data relay satellite in the bay. This is as we were elevating it from the stowed position to the 29 degree checkout position. It moved, uh, a phrase I used earlier in the, uh, with management today was that thing just moved majestically. It uh, is quietly, silently, as a matter of fact, and almost inexorably goes about its, its thing. This is a, as it was moving up toward the final attitude. 45 degrees, you can see on our protractor, that was our minimum elevation angle. Once it got to 45, if everything else was okay, that thing was going, whether we got to 58 or not. Now, that's the nozzle of the solid rocket motor, and this is the instant of separation. As Don said, we really had to kind of check the television view from this aspect to see that it was, in fact, deployed. Absolutely perfect deployment mechanically. It came straight out of the ASC, the Airborne Support Equipment, with no rates, just that, uh, again, at it's four tenths of a foot a second, which isn't all that fast. And now, at about a minute after deploy, as we thrust backward toward it, and you're not sure the thing is really clear of the orbiter, but that does cause you to pitch down also or away from the thing. But it nevertheless, it gets its attention when you're thrusting back toward a 17 or 18 ton piece of metal in the sky. <coughs> the white part is the IUS, the, the inertial upper stage. Here's where we started to, uh, to thrust toward it and pitch down. This is the FCS, Flight Control System Checkout. We do it uh, every flight on the vehicle. That uh, is story operating the camera to take data for the uh, continuous flow electrophoresis system experiment. This is once a joint venture between McDonnell Douglas and Johnson & Johnson, which they have every confidence is going to have direct earthborne application very shortly. He's, uh, he was taking some photos of the, the streams up there and down here. He's uh, getting ready to change out some samples. Don was basically, uh, he was the housekeeper, and you can see that he kept a, a nice, neat ship down here. You know, there's not a lot of trash and equipment and items hanging on the uh, lockers and on the bulkhead, and, and that really helped a lot. And this was flight day two here, while uh, Bo was telling the world about the uh, getaway specials. They were mounted in those three canisters. We did an antenna test, which necessitated us getting crossways to our velocity vector and then rolling at two degrees a second. We took some pictures of it, and I tell you, it was a little more impressive from on board than it is here. But nevertheless, it was a, a welcome diversion from just going around the world 
with the payload bay facing the earth all the time. This is on EVA day. That's uh, Story and Don in the airlock beginning their pre-breathe. You know, requires three and a half hours of pre-breathe on 100% oxygen to make sure or to have better assurances that we've flushed nitrogen out of the system so folks don't get the bends when they're exposed to the lower pressures in the suit. Bo was cleaning up the airlock and uh, making sure that everything was ready for him. This photo was taken through a, uh, no, this is from the aft TV cameras. That's the airlock hatch being opened in preparation for airlock egress. And this is a story like a, uh, a butterfly coming out of its chrysalis. I'll discuss the uh, extra vehicle activity or the spacewalk. The thing we wanted to test and evaluate there was our ability to do construction type work, repair type work in the environment of the, uh, the shuttle orbiter. We wanted to check out our suits and the life support systems on the back that we call EMUs. We wanted to evaluate how we check them out before we take them into the airlock and depress and take them outside. We did have three suits on board. We wanted to look at our ability to move about in the payload bay, up and down the longerons or up and down the long distance of the payload bay and across the bulkheads fore and aft. We wanted to look at our safety tether dynamics, the safety tether we wear to be sure that we stay connected uh, to the orbiter. We wanted to exercise various tools, winches, and in summary, <clears throat> our basic ability to do work, constructive type work or repair type work in the environment of the orbiter. Don here is back at the IUS tilt table. This is in the aft end. He's using a ratchet wrench here to uh, reposition some equipment. The story mentioned before, their, their practice run through of the IUS tilt table restow mechanism for which we have uh, an EVA procedure. That's just kind of a gee whiz thing. I tell you, this, this thing really does have a, a Star Wars effect. 65 feet is a long way back, and that's a big vehicle, and it's still surprising. You look back, you're in orbit, you're in a spacecraft, and a damn thing has got wings and a tail. It just, it seems innocuous. And, and when those guys were in the back end of the vehicle, they were far enough away, and, and everything just, Absolutely silent. You know, you're gliding over the Earth uh, due to some, some fortunate magic, and and they're back there having a heck of a good time. In this case, and uh, it, it really does have, it's more Star Warsy than Star Wars, I think. Except Star Wars spaceships have wings also. <coughs> This is, as we were going down, we were, we're fortunate here. That's the west coast of Mexico, just below Guadalajara, where it kind of bends from the southeast to the east-southeast. So we were zinging right along the Mexican coast, which has no significance, except I think it makes for a nicer looking picture than if you had nothing down there. You notice on the fin, the rudder is offset to the left a little bit up there. That kind of surprised me, it turns out in talking to folks afterward that the flight control system checkout leaves the rudder parked to the left. And uh, it's nothing to be concerned about. That's just what it does. Now, those are all daylight scenes. Here are some with the, with the, uh, the film compensates for the, the lack of overall illumination in the, in the cargo bay. I think Story mentioned that uh, the helmet-mounted lights were for all practical purposes, essential, and that the payload bay flood lighting was not adequate to do your task. Story here is using the uh, EVA winch that uh, is utilized for several different tasks. This is on the Ford bulkhead, and it's routed down to, he just pointed to an extra genie down there, which is used only to provide a load on the, uh, on the line that we use. Here we're doing some suit mobility checks, kind of uh, uh, reach envelope determination, suit stability and mobility evaluation, seeing if there were any objectionable uh, lockups 
in the uh, in any of the the bearings. See if you could put it in one position where you wanted it. Keep it there, so-called neutral point. Performance of the EMUs was just like the performance of the vehicle. It was, uh, we've had some bad starts, but uh, they all, they both work like champs in this particular evolution. And we're very gratified by that also. This is getting back into the airlock. Turns out we have a little work to do on, uh, the term story used is choreographing this evolution. And that, that's a very good term, I think is that uh, as far as our procedures for getting out of and into the airlock. This is on the last day of the flight when we had our impromptu uh, conversation with the vice president. And we decided we were uh, notified during the flight that we had the dubious distinction of, uh, of being the an average age, the oldest crew to ever fly, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> These were taken from the TV photo chase on return to Edwards. You can see the weather was as good out there for entry as it was at, uh, in Florida for the launch. This is through the HUD, through the head-up display. The HUD was a tremendous asset, I feel, toward making what subjectively, from, uh, from the operator's point of view, what, that I thought was a, a relatively smooth approach and landing. Here we are in a flare. Preparation for landing. This almost counts as a carrier landing, as you'll see in the next photo, by an overwater approach here. <laughs> Yeah, we're dry like that. Right. Uh, we felt a little turbulence, one gust on final, on the final approach, and it just sailed right through it with, with no crew response necessary. Uh, the touchdown was nominal. Uh, from my standpoint, anyway, relatively smooth. I didn't hear any gasps, so you guys might all have been holding your breath or something. Speed brakes are starting open. Our standard procedure, as soon as the main gear on deck, I call speed brakes open, and Bo manually opens the speed brakes to help impart some drag to it. <clears throat> but anyway, it, it's starting to come together, folks. The whole system is... Uh, I, we're on our way. It did feel good to be back on the ground again, even though it was a tremendously exhilarating experience. But that is just such a, a huge, impressive vehicle, especially when it's sitting on the ground. I cannot say from my own personal standpoint how pleased I was with the performance uh, of this vehicle. And I just can't say too much about this vehicle, which demonstrates to me the maturity of the entire shuttle program, the shuttle transportation system.